It's been a unique place of comfort for babies born dependent on drugs. Now, Lily's Place in Huntington will be the first center of its kind in the state, approved under a new licensure law that was passed by the 2015 West Virginia Legislature. We'll talk with a founding member of Lily's Place about that in a moment, but first, a look inside this innovative facility. A lot of times these babies are inconsolable. They just cry and cry and cry, and back here's where our nurseries are. And of course it's much quieter back here, uh, more dimly lit. My name is Rhonda Edmonds, and I'm the director of nursing at Lily's Place. You, you know, try all these different methods that we've learned that typically help these babies. Um, we call them therapeutic handling techniques. Another nursery, it's our little frog nursery. They like head to toe movement, they like to be swaddled. Um, oftentimes these babies are tremoring uncontrollably. We have the mama roos. We use those um, to calm them at times when once they're getting a little bit older. You actually kind of see them turn this corner where they go from being in so much pain and distress till they start feeling better and they start interacting with you and making that eye contact and even smiling and laughing out loud sometimes. This is another nursery. Oftentimes uh, parents will come for a tour before their baby comes over and they'll pick out the nursery that they would like their baby to be in. A lot of these moms feel very unworthy and devalued by the lifestyle that they have lived. This is what we call Kevin's room and it is a room, uh, we call it the rooming in room. They come here and they're able to spend the night before they take their baby home, kind of as a trial run. We want them to know that they are loved and they are cared about and that God loves them and He has a purpose for them and that hopefully this will be a turning point in their life that they have this baby and it can be an inspiration to them to make wiser choices. It is not our place to judge them. It is only our place to help them. And joining me now is Sarah Murray, director of the NAS unit at Cabell Huntington Hospital. Sarah, thank you for being here. Glad to be here. Oh, that's such a, that's so sweet, you know, <laughs> when you just actually see, the, see the place and you see the, you know, the attitude of the mm -hmm. caregivers. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's been happening. I know that Lily's Place was open in 2014. I know it's also evolved. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It has. Um, since we opened, we have um, taken care of over 100 babies. Wow. And so that's really good. We've uh, grown in staff. We've had to grow staff. We keep sending more babies. Um, they're licensed for 12, and we keep them right about uh, 9 to 10 babies. and. It is a very busy time at Lily's Place. I can only imagine. Um, I know that there's a lot of dedicated nurses, volunteers, people that made this possible. Mm -hmm. Where did the dream come from? How, how was conceptually uh, Lily's Place uh, um, brought forth? Well, Rhonda and I were nurses in the neonatal intensive care unit at Cabell, and our babies uh, were filling up the neonatal intensive care unit, and a lot of babies were having to be transferred out to other facilities because we did not have room for critically ill babies. So we started thinking about having our own unit and we worked and worked on that and we accomplished that. And then our unit started being filled. We opened with 12 beds and our average daily census almost every day was greater than 18. Right now it's 22. So we outgrew, really, the unit. But Rhonda and I, our vision always was to have a place where babies could go to a home environment and complete their treatment, a place where their mothers could get education, their mothers could um, visit, and we could provide services to the entire family. And we feel like and felt like at that time that providing for the entire family was what we needed to do. Well, I know our department, West Virginia uh, DHHR, has worked mm -hmm. closely oh, with yes. you all on this project because I think we all believe it's a labor of love. It's the right thing to do for the babies. The treatment is different in Lily's Place than what you see in the hospital setting, isn't it? Can you sort of describe what goes on in Lily's Place with the babies and with their, their whether it's their uh, biological or a foster family mm -hmm. or a potential adoptive family or sure. a kin? Sure. Um, at Lily's Place, 
every baby has a nursery and so the mother has some privacy with her baby at the hospital we have three babies per room and that works well in the hospital setting and especially early on to uh, observe the babies constantly but when they reach a point in their treatment that they don't need that then we would like for them to go to Lily's they are in a private room the mom can have her visitors and have some privacy and the nurses are right there to check on them frequently so that's the major difference between Lily's places that home-like atmosphere where parents can feel comfortable being in the room by themselves with the baby now just for our viewers information and we're still treating those babies during that time Absolutely. is that correct and <laughs> The substances that you see most often that are in the baby system now, today, is it different than where uh, it was two years ago? It is. When we first opened the neonatal therapeutic unit, what we were seeing mostly were mothers in treatment in a Subutex program or a methadone program. And that was pretty easy to uh, identify and capture those babies, get them comfortable. Now we're seeing um, a lot of heroin. Uh, mothers are seem to be going back to heroin, but they're mixing a lot of other drugs or medications with heroin for various reasons, and that makes the babies um, very challenging to treat and to get comfortable. It's made us have to, the babies stay longer, and um, it, it's really hard to make them comfortable. And it's challenging for the nurse. It's, um, as nurses, we know we want to make somebody mm -hmm. better, and we want to make them better right now. And with these babies, we're not a always able to do that immediately. Now, I know it's critically important, as you mentioned earlier, working with whatever family is there with the baby, because eventually these babies go home. Right. How do you focus on education so when the babies do go home, there's a clear understanding of how they're a little bit different and how they need more support during the you know, first few months of their lives? At both Lily's Place and the Neonatal Therapeutic Unit, we begin education the minute the mother walks through the door. Uh, we show her a video uh, Dr. Loudon created to tell her what her baby's going through and what she can expect while her baby's hospitalized, which has been a real help for the moms. But we observe them. We teach them to um, change diapers, to take the baby's temperature, to know when the baby's uncomfortable, to know when he's had enough stimulation. These little babies cannot take very much stimulation. What we do with a baby who hasn't been prenatally exposed and a baby who has is totally different. We don't um, put things in front of their face or we don't put a mobile in their bed until they're a little older and a little farther along in their treatment. And so it's, it's a continuing thing and it does not stop when they go to Lily's place. It more intensifies because we are preparing them for discharge to home. We want the mom to know that this baby is going to be fussy when it goes home. Some days you're going to have days where it's hard to console the baby, and we want to equip her to know that, that she's not alone, that mm -hmm. there are resources for her that she can reach out to if she just reaches her wit's end with a fussy baby. Well, I think that's critically important. I mean, you're, you're doing, you're providing a service where, you know, there's a, a approach where the mother and the baby, the family is all being nurtured. And I'm sure the goal is education of the mother as well and what the substances have done and how she can get treatment going forward. Is that, is, that, is that something you talk a little bit about? We do. And the mothers, they have a lot of guilt. And regardless of where they are, in treatment or not in treatment, they do have a lot of guilt. You know, as mothers, we always look and wish we had done things different when we were, when our children were small. And these mothers are no different. They have extreme guilt and they have an extreme sense of, of worthlessness. And so we try to encourage her to get help at both facilities. We um, try to link them with resources. But you're right, we do try to do as much education as possible with these moms is the short time we have them. Well, uh, an admirable job. Thank, thank you. you for your vision and thank, thank you, you for what you do at both Cabell Huntington and at Lily's Place. Uh, we're here to help families and you're a critical part of that. Thank, thank you. you so much. Coming up, the fight to help babies going through drug withdrawal has reached the federal level and one of West Virginians' own is leading the charge. We'll have more on that when we get back 